Hello everyone, this is Tech Adder, and in this installment of Water Cooling 101, I will be talking about custom pump tops and even show you how to make one. Pumps. From DDC to Eheim to pump rest combos, there are so many pumps out there that it can be confusing. But there is one thing all pumps have in common. You will all find them somewhere in a water cooling build. Whether it's hidden away in the back of the case or off to the side or right in front, you just have to look for them. But in my opinion, the best builds don't have them off to the side, but as a recognized piece of the loop, unlike many who sometimes neglect they even have one. Having them complementing the build in some way, giving it more bling or some kind of element, really brings the loop full circle. One way I think can accomplish this is by modifying your pump to make it something you want to show off rather than stow away. And I would like to share with you how to build one and how easy it really is. So today, we will be building this collection of EK Bits Power Parts which to me makes your pump really aesthetically pleasing and increases its bling factor so to speak. To start off, let's go over some of the things you will need and the basic assembly. So for the pump, I am using a SwiftTech MCP35X and what you're going to want to do is remove the plastic clamshell holding it together. Then all it is is just to slot it into the EK DDC heatsink housing and then screw the bits power DDC pump top on. Now this is a basic overview just to spark some thought, but if you want to make the exact pump I showed you, I'll explain each step. So the first step is removing the pump from its housing. I already had it removed, but basically there are four screws holding it in the top cover, and all you have to do is remove the pump from its housing, flip it over, and push on the center of the pump which should free it. It's pretty easy. One thing to keep in mind is the direction of flow on the pump. I used the void warranty sticker placement in relation to the outlet, and just made a mental note, but you might want to put a piece of masking tape on it or some other indicator just so you don't install the whole thing the wrong way. The second step is installing the pump into the EK DDC heatsink housing. The first thing you are going to want to do is grab the thermal pad, make sure it's oriented the right way, and place it on the pump, giving it a good firm press to make sure it's nice and stuck on there. Then, just plop that sucker right into the heatsink and again give it a good ol' rub. Before we begin the next step, make sure that you are using the o-ring provided by the Bits Power pump top, instead of the one in the MCP35X. Then. Take these screws, located in the EK DDC heatsink housing, and take your pump top, insert the screws through the heatsink and into the pump top, and screw it in until you reach the end of the thread. The next step is pretty simple. What you're going to want to do is find the rubber screws included with the EK heatsink, and then screw them into the bottom of the screws you just put in. This will dampen any vibrations that the pump may cause, reducing its noise. After that, you're all done and have an elegant pump top that will look great in your water cooling loop providing an accent to your build and giving it a new focus. This combination of heatsink and pump top really makes your pump look great, and it's only one of the hundreds of possibilities out there. If you're using a different style or brand of pump, you may have to modify this tutorial a bit to get a similar look. If you wanted to attach this to your reservoir, I know both BitsPower and EK have solutions for that in the form of some kind of adapter, but I will not be covering that in this video since not all builds have that kind of configuration. I also want to clarify that I'm not saying that pumps look bad without custom tops. If you like your pump the way it is, then that's fine, and it may work for you in your personal build. But for those who are looking to step it up a notch or feel they are missing a certain element in their loop, this might just be the solution for you. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And I'm currently working on a video about a build that I'm working on, which will be out in the next few weeks or so, so make sure you're subscribed for that. And with that, thanks for watching this video, and I will see you guys next time.